Hello, welcome to my talk. All about the fluids. This talk, it's the first talk of the series talks on turbulence modeling. In this talk, a brief history of the turbulence modeling is introduced, including the challenges for the turbulence modeling. I must say, turbulence modeling is an ongoing and a very difficult topic. Covering so many areas and development, many are case dependent. It would be very difficult to give a full reviews on this topic. Therefore, this talk will be mainly based on the personal understandings and thoughts on this issue, with the personal choice of the material for the talks. I hope. The series talks will give you a good picture on the landscape of turbulence modeling, and help you to understand the issue better. The recorded study on fluid turbulence would be first made by Leonardo da Vinci, the Italian polymorph, who. Made so many significant contributions in many areas, even including fluid mechanics. In around 1500, Leonardo da Vinci observed the fluid turbulence and drew a few drawings of turbulent flows. Here show some of them. This is the flow past the bluff body, in which we can see the vortex shedding clearly from the structure. This one is a water jet from a square tunnel, in which we can see the large eddies occupy almost all the pool, and the very small eddies on the water surface. This is the drawing of a deluge of a city. We can see the swelling clouds and the winds dominates the whole painting. Da Vinci must have been mused by the natural power. A disaster was caused by the natural power. To study the turbulence flow, we must first have the mathematical equations for describing the dynamics and the motions of the fluid. Leonard Euler, the Swiss mathematician and physicist, was the first scholar who actually unified the mechanics of fluids to a single point. By deriving the fluid dynamics equation, which now bears his name as Euler equation, as this, and laid the foundation for establishing the four fluid dynamic equation. Euler used the following principles for deriving the dynamic equation of the fluid motion. He extended the Newton's mechanics of mass point to fluids, the continuum media. He formally employed the substantial derivative for calculating the fluid acceleration. He separated the force acting on the fluid into the surface force and the body surface. As we all know very well, the fourth fluid dynamic equation is the Navier-Stokes equation. Given as this, the difference between the Navier-Stokes equation and the Euler equation is here: the term of the flow with cause force and the term for the 
effect of the fluid compressibility. To establish the four fluid dynamic equation, many researchers have made their contribution to the topic. The first attempt was made by Navier in 1822, who managed to obtain the correct form of four fluid dynamics equation by considering the molecular viscous force in the dynamic equation. In 1827, Cauchy derived the four fluid dynamic equation by taking the fluid as the perfectly inelastic body and the forcefully introduced the symmetrical viscous stress tensor, which was actually adopted from his own symmetrical tensor for solids. In 1829, Poisson obtained the fluid dynamic equation by regarding the fluids as temporary solids, and he introduced the pressure into the total stress tensor. In 1837, saint Valon used the concept of the molecules slides approximations to derive the four fluid dynamic equation. In 1845, Stokes presented an elegant derivation of the four fluid dynamic equation, which has become the standard derivation as we have seen in many standard textbooks. The four fluid dynamic equation seemed well accepted of the stocks because of the following two facts. The analytic solution for some simple nominal flows have been validated using the experiment data, such as the hagen pursui flow, a flow in a horizontal pipe. No slip boundary condition was accepted formally for viscous flows. The four flow dynamic equation was formally named as Navier Stokes equation in 1934 when Planter gave his lecture on fundamentals of hydro and aero mechanics. And uh, since ever, the name has been used. Joseph Valentin Boussinesque was a French mathematician and physicist who proposed the Boussinesque hypothesis on eddy viscosity, which was published in 1877. It is well known today for the Boussinesque hypothesis provided an expression for the Leonard's stress tensor, which was published in 1895. Therefore, there is a paradox here. How the solution comes 18 years earlier than the question. The factual information is as below. In 1872 and uh, in 1877, Bosinska report and published a paper in which he reasoned that the turbulent flow could be still represented by the averaged flow, which would resemble the nominal flow, with a much larger artificial viscosity, new total. So the stress tensor is represented in this form, and this relation is now named as the Bosinescu's hypothesis. Nanos in 1895 derived the Nanos average the Navier Stokes equation and the Nanos stress tensor, but he did not link the Bosinescu's eddies viscosity and the Nanos number.
According to Roddy, it was Pronta who, in 1925, firstly linked the Leonard's stress tensor and Bosnesk's hypothesis together. Addition now being employed in most turbulence model as this. Here, nu t is the eddy viscous coefficient. Osborne Reynolds was a British scientist, engineer, and pioneer, and he made his important contributions in the understanding of fluid dynamics. In earlier 1880s, Reynolds performed a series of experiments using many pipes of different sizes to examine the phenomenon of the flow from the laminar to turbulent transition. And he could conclude one non-dimensional parameter he named the k-number to indicate the transition from laminar to turbulent. Now the k-number was named as Leonard's number. In 1895, he showed the experiment result for laminar flow, the Leonard's number is smaller than 1900, and for turbulent flow, the Leonard's number is larger than 2000. In the paper, Leonard's used the stable flow and unstable flow for the laminar and the turbulent flows. And this result is very close to what we take as the critical Leonard's number today as 2300. In the paper published in 1895, he also performed an ensemble averaging analysis to derive the Leonard's average Navier-Stokes equation, as well as the Leonard's stress tensor given as this for the specific uh, Leonard stress tensor. Here, u prime i and u prime j are the fluctuating velocities of the flow. In this slide, a story is on the turbulence as a known and how it gets popularities. In around 1500, Da Vinci studied the turbulent flow, and he first used the Italian word turbulenza. In English, it is turbulence to describe the whirling flow. In 1872 and 1877, Bosnesk used the tumultuous movement or in agitations to describe the turbulent flow. In 1883, Leonard used direct flow and the sinuous flow to describe the laminar and the turbulent flow. But in 1895, he used the stable flow and the unstable flow for the laminar and the turbulent flow. In 1887, Lord Kelvin saw William Thompson Firstly, he used the known turbulence to describe turbulent motion in a publication. And both laminar and turbulent were even used in the title of a paper published in the same year. See reference here. The word the turbulence was gradually getting popularities in early 1900. In the UK, two important books. Nam's book, Hydrodynamics, the third edition, published in 1906, and uh, Lancaster's book, Aerodynamics, published in 1907, both contain the content devoted to turbulence. And at the same period in France and in Germany, Researchers started to use the word turbulence formally and frequently.
Ludwig Planter was a German fluid dynamicist and engineer. In 1904, Planter reasoned that at large Lenard's numbers, it is true for many practical flows. The velocity transition from a certain value away from the wall to zero directly at the wall takes place in a thin layer, the boundary layer named by Planter. Accordingly, the flow domain can be separated into two regions. Away from the solid boundary, the flow viscosity can be neglected. Or its effect is much smaller than the eddy viscosity. Thus, the flow can be treated as potential flows. Near the wall, there is a thin viscous boundary layer in which the flow viscous effect is important. So the boundary layer theory could solve the problem, including the D'Alembert. Paradox: The flow passes a simple structure. The wall functions. The transition from laminar flow to turbulent flow, and the boundary layer separation, etc. In 1925, Planter proposed the concept called mixing lens model. He performed an analysis. Of the shear stress in fluids, resembling the viscous stress from the molecular transport momentum in a perfect gas, which is given as this. Here, new given by this is the molecular viscosity, and here V T H is the average the molecular velocity, or called the sum of velocity. At the plumper, the place the mean free pass L M F P with the mixing lens L mix. So we have the stress expression as this, and here the mixing velocity given as this. So from the plumper's mixing lens hypothesis, we could obtain. The turbulence stress tensor tau x y equals this, and here new t is the kinematic eddy viscosity given as this. Planter's mixing lens model is very simple. The calculation based on it are very easy, and in unbounded flows such as the jets, wakes, and the plumes. The velocity profile can be fairly well protected. For most boundary layer flows, the order of the magnitude of the mixing lens can be correctly guessed if you are experienced. The disadvantage for this Planter's mixing lens model for the complicated flow, it is impossible to estimate. The distribution of mixed lens magnitude with the acceptable accuracy. The Hitchy effect and the long locality effect cannot be considered in such a simple model. Earlier attempts for the four turbulence closure started from 1940s, and the researchers started to. Establish the turbulence closure models based on transport equation for turbulence variables, including Reynolds stresses, turbulence energy, lens scale, and the dissipation rate, etc. These earliest turbulence models are mostly based on the reasoning or suggestions for the turbulence qualities. Linked with average flows. Following are some of the examples. Kolmogorov K omega model in 1942. K 
is the turbulent energy and omega is the frequency. This model is based on the analysis of local property of turbulence and it was proposed for transport equations for solving k and omega and these two parameters are used directly in the average momentum equation. The Planter 1 equation model in 1945, which is based on transport equation for serving the turbulence energy K, and it needs to specify the length scale L for calculating the AD viscosity given by this. And the Cho's proposal in 1945, which is a rather complicated turbulence model, similar to the today's Leonard's stress model. The transport equations are based on the Leonard's average navial Stokes equation, and the higher order turbulence terms is assumed for some simple calculations.